The KO the Kangaroo series is actually one that's been around since the year 2000. That first game saw a release on Windows, the Sega Dreamcast and the Game Boy Advance, and subsequent games appeared on consoles such as the PlayStation 2, the GameCube and the original Xbox during the early years of the new millennium. Well, after a 17 year break, KO is back in a new adventure which releases on the Nintendo Switch this week. Will it put a spring in your step or will you rue your time playing it? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now let's find out. In terms of story, you play as Ko, who goes on a quest to find his sister after she goes missing, and in turn seeks to find out more about his father who also disappeared some time ago. Before long, Ko dons his father's old boxing gloves which are said to have magical qualities to take on the dark forces that are now threatening his homeland. So gameplay wise, Ko the Kangaroo is a 3D platformer. Levels take more of a linear path with you almost funneled towards the exit rather than having open levels as was the case in something like Super Mario 64, although there are still opportunities to come off the beaten path to find collectibles such as the three letters of KO's name, crystals and scrolls. You'll be jumping over hazards, avoiding obstacles and there are also a few minor puzzle elements in stages where you'll need to hit switches to open doors or clear a pathway which do keep things interesting. As well as this, you'll be participating in combat against a number of underlings, with these combat sessions generally taking the form of arena areas where you'll need to kill all of the enemies on screen before you can move on. KO will fly towards the nearest enemy when you press Y to attack. A few weak attacks will then see you have the opportunity to perform a stronger attack with X, complete with slow-mo animation as the enemies are dispatched. KO will find elemental power-ups for his boxing gloves as you play and these can then be used to open up more of the levels, destroying spider webbed areas or charging up motored platforms with your firepower for example. You'll need to have an element charge to use these and these are found throughout levels with the amount you have displayed at the bottom of the screen. The platforming sections are fairly standard, you'll find disappearing platforms or time triggered hazards which will test your reflexes and you can reposition the camera by moving the right stick which definitely assisted in these areas and was never really a hindrance. There was no way of locking onto enemies or recentering the camera which would have been useful, especially in boss fights and we'll touch on these a bit more in a moment. Completing a level takes you to the hub area which is an open world section and within here there are further collectibles to find and a shop where you can spend the currency that you'll find in abundance within each stage on extra lives or heart pieces which will ultimately earn you an extra hit point. You'll sometimes find bonus challenge levels within areas and these can also be attempted again through portals in these hub areas. There are actually a few different hub worlds that you'll visit and you can move between them to retry older levels as you move through the game. To open further levels within each hub world you must find a certain number of runes, again like the stars in Super Mario 64, however they are handled a little differently here in that instead of gaining one for each level you complete, there are instead a number of them hidden both within the hub world itself and in levels. Personally, I would have preferred for there to have been less of them and to earn them through completion of stages rather than having to go on a scavenger hunt through a hub world as this slowed down the pacing of the game for me and it wasn't really to my personal tastes. Even the first boss who puts up a relative challenge, bearing in mind how early in the game you face him, doesn't actually grant you a rune on completion which just seems a very odd choice. Once you have obtained a required number of runes, you will then spot the further levels owing to their purple glow in the hub area and once unlocked you can jump into them to progress the game. In terms of the controls, well I've alluded to the camera already which is certainly more of a help than a hindrance. The combat works well enough in the context of the game considering it isn't really the main focus and the general movement is absolutely fine. The biggest issue is the jump which doesn't quite feel satisfying enough. It feels more like a jump upwards than forwards even when double jumping and it does make some of the platforming sections more tedious than they should be. It's not enough to ruin the enjoyment but jumping is the bread and butter of a platformer and it needed to be tighter than it is here. Talking of ruining the experience though, there is something I now have to mention. I was enjoying my time with the game until I discovered a glitch that unfortunately tarnished anything good I'd mentioned about the game so far. 
After playing a couple of hours of the second hub world, exploring for runes and attempting a couple of the levels, I quit out of the game and returned to the main menu. However, on loading my game back up, I was taken back to the final level of world one, meaning I had lost all of the progress from this point. There is clearly an issue with the auto save facility once you cross that threshold into the new hub area. And I'll be honest, I was not willing to invest any more time into a game that could at any moment lose my progress. I know of two other review channels, Switch Corner and Star or Shovelware, who have both had the same issue, and this needs patching urgently. For clarity, I was playing version 1.1 of the game. KO the Kangaroo was generally quite fun, albeit with a jump that could do with some refinement. However, the auto save bug is a huge issue and needs patching pronto, as it spoilt the whole experience. With this in mind, gameplay scores 7 out of 20. Controls are generally fine, although the jump is more awkward than it should be, and they score 13 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, KO the Kangaroo does present the player with a rich and vibrant world, packed full of colour and interesting locales. Characters during cutscenes have a plasticine type quality to them, which is quite endearing, and on the whole, I really enjoyed the aesthetic direction the developers took. Performance wise it runs on the Unreal 4 engine and it does seem to suffer from the same issues that other Switch games on this engine encounter. This includes assets loading in quite late when entering a new area and some popping as you move through levels. KO the Kangaroo runs at what initially seems like a quite consistent 30 frames per second, however the further into the game you get, the more drops and stutters your encounter. This is particularly evident when smashing crates for collectibles or battling enemies, sometimes even when just turning the camera. When playing in handheld mode whilst it retains its vibrancy, there is that blurry aspect which does dampen the experience a tad, though it is still perfectly playable, saving glitch aside of course. Audio wise, the music does complement the gameplay and visuals well, with the Australian Outback setting emphasised through the use of the sounds of the didgeridoo instrument being interwoven through the soundtrack. The biggest flaw here really is the voice acting which ranges from passable at times to pretty dreadful at others, and the biggest culprit here is Ko himself, which exacerbates the issue owing to the fact that he is of course the main protagonist and therefore is the most vocal. But I have to help her. Please don't try to stop me, mum. Visuals are most certainly pleasing, but performance suffers as the game begins to fall under its own weight to some degree. And then of course you have the biggest issue with performance being the fact it doesn't always save your game. With this in mind, visuals, including performance, get nine out of 20. Audio in terms of the music is actually quite enjoyable. However, the voice acting really does detract from the quality of the overall package and it gets 13 out of 20. KO the Kangaroo costs £24.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. Now this section is going to be heavily handicapped by the saving glitch as I cannot give a high value for money score to a game that currently includes such a fundamental flaw, no matter what other merits it has. To focus on those other merits for a moment though, it does harken back to 3D platformers of old, mainly the PS2, Xbox and GameCube era, which is fitting as that's when the original games in this series came out, and it reminded me of other games such as Tyler Tasmanian Tiger and The Legend of K, which ironically are both available on the Switch in remastered form. If the glitch is patched then this score along with gameplay would increase considerably, so perhaps this is a game to feature in an all patched up episode in the future, but for now value scores 7 out of 20. To conclude, KO the Kangaroo has the potential to be a fun and enjoyable modern ode to 3D platformers of old, however it is not currently in a state where it can be recommended. Whilst there are some minor issues such as the jump feeling a bit awkward and a frame rate that can dip at times, it's that glitch that allows for progress to be lost that is the main issue and desperately needs patching. Aside from this though, if you are looking for an alternative to the big 3D platformers such as Crash Bandicoot 4 or Mario Odyssey, personally I would still go for Tyler Tasmanian Tiger. It holds up incredibly well, runs at a smooth 60 frames per second and can be found fairly cheap physically these days. This one needs a patch or two first, so let's hope they hop to it. KO the Kangaroo gets a switch up score of 49%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it. Very unfortunate that there is this glitch, let's hope they sort it out because there is a decent game hidden underneath it. 
A quick thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>